going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. So today is Thursday, one day closer to the weekend. And yes, I'm actually putting this video out a little bit early today because I'm actually going out of town for the day. But you know, I couldn't leave you guys hanging. So having a look at what's going on, we are having our second day of solid green across the board. I will certainly take that. If we have a look at what's going on today, we see that the market cap is up to $140 billion. Bitcoin sitting around $4,300 today. XRP still holding steady in that second place. If we look at the biggest gainer of the day, we have Gold Bits Coin, which I've literally never heard of, up 61%. Verge, Bitcoin, Siren Labs, Factum, Tron, Komodo, Icon, Pivx, and 0x all doing quite well today. And if we have a look, we do notice that while the gains across the board are pretty crazy, it's still a lot more to go, guys, until we get back to where we were. But that being said, you know, let's not rain on the day here because as we can see right here, Google Trends have actually been up for Bitcoin searches. So as you can see, it says mainstream media is paying more and more attention to everything blockchain, and this in turn facilitates interest in cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin specifically. So you can kind of see the chart right there. They go on to say that it's been speculated that the price of Bitcoin and its Google trend search are highly correlated with each other, which suggests the uptick may be a sign of things to come for Bitcoin's price. A study conducted in 2017 by researcher Willie Wu, who we actually spoke about a couple days ago on the channel, shows that Google search trends can even be used to detect speculative bubbles as well as the best and worst times to buy cryptocurrency. And if you don't believe me, this is literally the Google Trends chart. I have it back all the way from May of last year. I mean, that's literally the Bitcoin chart. So just, just putting it out there, guys. It is starting to rise, so that is pretty good news. Now, before we move on, I have to just look at this really funny petition that is on uh, change.org. So literally somebody, this is it, okay? They have 355 people that have signed this and it says, stop Bitcoin from dumping lower. Problem, why it keep going down? Solution, make it stop, sir. Personal story, I don't think I make help. <laughs> so there you guys go. If you wanna sign this petition, they have 355 out of 500 people. You can't make these things up, guys. But in all sincerity, let's talk about the positives moving forward. Obviously, people were pretty excited after the consensus event that happened in New York. I'm glad because last consensus, uh, well, we all know what happened to the price when that, when that happened. So long story short, there was a lot of positivity that came out. Also, let's not forget, we have the NASDAQ Bitcoin futures that also got announced. The SEC on the Bitcoin ETF, we know that that's still kind of up in the air. And you do have the one that came out for the ETF. So there's a lot of good news and we're going to get into all of this right now. In fact, on the topic of Switzerland's ETP, it says that it was launched on the Swiss exchange and it has been clocking good trade volume. So apparently people are responding pretty good to this. So this is on the six Swiss exchange. So a week after its launch, the product has clocked the highest turnover of any product on the exchange. Now, granted, I did find the daily turnover to be somewhat low. I don't know if this is a misprint, but it's it says it's 425,000 at closing as of November 26, beating several commodity products in silver, crude oil, and gold. That does seem quite low when you put it in perspective. According to ETF.com, the SPDR gold shares ETF clocks in at an average 987 million. OK, but that being said, it's still very good and there is demand for it. And a source familiar with the product is reported to have revealed that the volumes have been contributed equally by both retail investors and institutions as well, which means it's getting the best of both worlds. Now, moving on to the big story of the day, this is the one that I'm sure everyone's going to be talking about. So. Amazon, yes, this is pretty big. So last year, they pretty much dismissed the idea of getting into blockchain with their uh, web services, but today that has changed. The company announced a new service called Amazon Quantum Ledger Database, or QLDB, which is a fully managed ledger database with a central authority, okay, central trusted authority. But the service, which is launching in preview today, offers an append-only immutable journal that tracks the history of all changes, okay? And all the changes are cryptographically chained 
and verifiable. So they also say including its transparent nature, ability to automatically scale up or down as needed, ease of use and speed. The database can execute two to three times more transactions, Amazon claimed, compared with its existing products. So the company also debuted the AWS Managed Blockchain. So this is a fully managed service that allows you to set up and manage a scalable blockchain network with just a few clicks. It also manages your certificates, lets you easily invite new members to join the network and tracks operational metrics such as usage of compute, memory, and storage resources. So this is the official statement that came out from Amazon. So in their words, they say that Amazon Managed Blockchain is a fully managed service that makes it easy to create and manage scalable blockchain networks using the popular open source frameworks Hyperledger Fabric and Ethereum. Yes, you heard me right, guys. Ethereum. So it does say that currently the Ethereum portion is not up and running. It is coming soon because I was worried, like, are these guys going to take down the big dogs? You know what I'm saying? Like, are we going to have to run and, and, and be scared about this? Is, is, is hope all over? Well, it turns out that they're going to be using Ethereum. So... It's actually pretty good news for Ethereum. It also goes on to say that Amazon Managed Blockchain is a fully managed service that allows you to set up and manage a scalable blockchain network with just a few clicks. Amazon Managed Blockchain eliminates the overhead required to create the network and automatically scales to meet the demands of thousands of applications running millions of transactions. So there you go. If that is not good news for blockchain i don't know what is and guys i wanted to just say something really quick we have had a very very rough year okay we know that this has been quite the downward spiral bear market okay there's been a lot of depression a lot of people bought high but i want to point out that there's still people in the space that are very well known permables so to speak and they've lost a lot as well for example net realized and unrealized losses on digital assets at galaxy digital holdings so if you guys are familiar with mike novogratz the firm founded last year okay totaled about 41 million in the third quarter bringing losses to the first nine months of the year through september to 100 and $36 million. And you can see the losses right here on paper, okay? And another thing that's happened too, unfortunately, is a lot of these blockchain projects that rely on paying their employees in the actual crypto have fallen on hard times because a crypto that was worth 10 bucks last year is worth a dollar this year. So as you can see right here, Steam, for example, has actually had to let go, uh, Steam it, excuse me, has had to let go of some of their employees. So it says right here, the model, it says Steam is a blockchain that generates revenue for both the users and the developers who spend their time on Steam it. If you've used it, maybe you're familiar with it. A lot of people know, you know, you get upvotes, you earn Steam based on your posts and stuff like that. And it says since the company behind the platform never organized an ICO, they use the funds from the initial mining process and stake the funds needed for the operation. This means that the project is most probably using its funds from a treasury to keep the project alive while the bear market keeps its toll. The problem is that the central authority, Steemit Incorporated, relies mostly on an inflationary DPoS model, which stands for Delegated Proof of Stake, if you're not familiar with that, to keep the actual use case of the Steemit blockchain alive. The blockchain has no use case whatsoever if the service built on top of it stops and currently stands. So basically, they had an update from Ned Scott. And he said that 70% of the people working on Steemit have unfortunately been laid off as a direct result of this cryptocurrency market. Steemit will still continue to exist according to the statement, but the company will go over a full restructuring and reevaluation. So, you know, unfortunately, even though times may turn around and, you know, eventually we may enter the next phase of the bull run, the damage has been done. And th these are just some of the, um, you know, battle wounds that are going to come out of this bear market, basically. So also getting into some quick, uh, super quick crypto news, coin news. So apparently some people have been receiving notifications from Binance saying that we regret to inform you that we're unable to provide our services to you going forward due to updates to our terms of service. Some people are assuming that this is due to jurisdiction. It looks like they're not giving out direct reasons why. I don't know for sure. I'm. I, this is just a post, okay? Um, we have to look into this, so don't you know, freak out or panic, but some people are reporting this, but we'll see, you know, how this pans out. You know, I'm not too sure. Just want to let you guys know. Now, check this out, man. This has to be one of the most despicable crimes I've ever heard. No joke. I mean, seriously, hackers infect Make-A-Wish Foundation with crypto mining malware. 
Are you serious, guys? Make a wish foundation? So researchers from the security firm Trustwave reported that crypto mining scripts were uploaded to the Make a Wish Foundation website with the script utilizing the computing power of site visitors in order to mine crypto for cyber criminals. Just in the last few months, the Drupal Gadon 2 bug at RCE vulnerability and older versions of Drupal affected over 100,000 sites using Drupal. Researchers at Trustwave now believe that the Make a Wish Foundation site could very well have been infected through the same vulnerability with the foundation identifying and removing the malicious code. Unbelievable, guys. Is there no end to the madness? Now, let's talk about the uh, SEC wrongly classifying an ICO as a security. So this is not something we see. Usually it's the other way around. Usually it's a uh, utility token that is actually a security. So it turns out that in a landmark ruling, Southern District of California Judge Gonzalo Curiel declared that a classification by the SEC on an ICO as a security is actually not justified. So this is BlockVest's ICO was declared an, um, a security by the SEC earlier, okay? Basically, the SEC had claimed that the token platform attracted investors through showing it would be profitable to fund their tokens, going as far to claim that the platform had created its blockchain exchange commission for that very specific purpose. However, in its defense, BlockVest said that the tokens were used for the explicit purpose of testing the working environment of the exchange. The investors, according to the platform, were close friends. Um, who were willing to test the system, essentially. The platform told the judge that it had no plans to further pursue an ICO and any wrongdoings claimed by the regulator were unsubstantial. So there's a bit of a turn of events. And on top of that, while the SEC over in America is busy cracking down on unregulated ICOs, you have New Zealand-based financial service provider launching an ICO for the first time. So this is the team at CoinGrid. They're looking to raise 140,000 Ethereum to build a cryptocurrency exchange that is user-friendly and compliant with local laws. Now, what's interesting is New Zealand is known to be one of the strictest countries in the world in terms of adapting cryptocurrency. It's worth mentioning that no cryptocurrency exchanges in New Zealand fully support fiat due to regulatory issues. Many ICO projects in New Zealand have actually registered overseas to avoid having to deal with those strict laws of New Zealand. So this is where CoinGrid is standing out. They've decided to tackle the issue head on, and basically they've communicated with the regulators regulatory bodies. And this is the reason why many cryptocurrency enthusiasts um, are pretty excited about this. And they think that this is going to set a good example for how to do it the right way moving forward. Also want to talk about some kind of good news, some really cool adoption that I that I uh, you know checked out this morning. So we have decentralized apps based on Ethereum that are actually going to be rewarding residents of Manila in the Philippines with ETH for cleaning up heavily populated beaches uh, in the capital city. So you guys know Joseph Lubin, he's the co-founder of Ethereum, also CEO at Consensus with a SYS. So he says, in Manila, participants will be paid in ETH for spending a few hours cleaning up one of the most heavily polluted beaches in the world. And this is Bounty's network, okay? So them and Consensus Impact um, are proving that a new model where people fund uh, causes directly can be done without intermediaries. So Bounty's network, which is a dApp on Ethereum, basically enables anyone on the platform to create bounties and reward participants with ETH supporting various causes and initiatives. So isn't that some nice things to hear? Not like those Make-A-Wish Foundation scammers. We need more stuff like this and less stuff like that. So anyway, also we have a South Korean lawmaker reportedly introduced a bill to promote cryptocurrency trading and development of crypto exchanges. In addition, to requirements such as capital manpower and internal systems. The bill proposes establishing a committee to promote and support crypto trading. A lot of good news coming out this week. Got to be honest, guys. So you also it says the Digital Asset Trading uh, Promotion Act includes a comprehensive plan for establishing a guideline for promoting the development of virtual currency exchanges and blockchain technology, tax reduction and exemption, measures against hacking damage and prevention of market disturbances. It was also noted that Japan has already completely legalized these procedures to institutionalize crypto transactions and the U.S. has allowed the trading of cryptocurrency derivatives. So look like these guys are definitely getting on board and I gotta tell you I saved the best for last okay so North Korea yes North Korea not South Korea North Korea is going to be hosting a blockchain and crypto summit next year this is according to a press release published on the official website of North Korea 
Apparently, there's an official website of North Korea. So, the country will host a crypto and blockchain summit in April of 2019. The event will go on for eight days. Wow. And participants will get a chance to visit different locations in the country and experience its culture. Now, I do want to say that this is going to cost 3,300 euros, which is about 3,700 US dollars. So that's going to be a no from me, dog. But hey, to those of you that can afford that expensive ticket and are willing to take a trip to North uh, Korea, then that sounds like it could be a good time. So apparently the Korean Friendship Association announced the release. They said that preparations were underway to open North Korea's doors to investors and cryptocurrency fans from around the world to visit and have an experience. Now, they say that some people are worried, you know, the whole North Korea thing might scare some people off. Well, I guess this is in the Democratic People's Republic of Korea or the DPRK. They said it can be uh, considered the safest country in the world. I don't know. That's just what it says. It says, as long as you have a basic common sense and respect for the culture and belief of other nations, you'll always be welcome to enjoy like thousands of friends we've been hosting for the past 28 years and engaged in cultural, sports, science, or business relations. So there you go. North Korea, they're getting on the blockchain bandwagon. They have a crypto summit coming up. Ah, memory lane. Thinking all the way back to buy Bitcoin when the, uh, when the markets were just booming. But hey guys, that being said, I'll take it. We've had some green this week. Really, really want to say I appreciate everybody coming back. I know this is super early, kind of a quicker episode. I'm literally making this at like six o'clock AM in the morning, guys. So I hope you appreciate the update. For all I know, I could put this video out and you know, the whole market could crash and some crazy news could come out. I don't know. But right now, this is what's going on in the world of crypto. And I want to say thank you so much to everyone who's been liking, subscribing, commenting, joining the Telegram, signing up for the newsletter. You guys freaking rock. That being said, my name is K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Until next time, stay crypto and peace out.